I would like to welcome you all to our webinar from our studio in Kaufering in Germany. Today we are going to talk about comprehensive base plate and anchor design based on realistic behavior. I am one of the hosts, my name is Michael Schwalm, I am responsible for the social media topic in Central Europe. Now I will hand over you into our social media corner and there is waiting for us our first specialist. Welcome Oliver! Hello everybody, my name is Oliver Geibig. I'm a structural engineer, 13 years with Hilti, and I'm now heading the engineering department here in Central Europe. What is the consequence if you assume a rigid base plate and at the end this base plate is not really behaving rigid? That is something I would kindly ask to uh, my colleagues from the headquarter in, uh, from the Principality of Liechtenstein. Perfect. So I would say we hope that we see you back with a lot of questions and welcome Jörg and Mario. Hello yeah. everybody. Hello everybody. My name is Jörg Appel. I'm technical expert for fastening technology in Hilti. My name is Mario and I'm responsible for design software at Hilti. So uh, as Oliver already mentioned, in the end uh, underneath the current design assumptions there is the rigid base plate assumption. If you, if you have a different base plate and which is not considered rigid, we want to now talk a little bit about the consequences this might have. And therefore I would ask Jörg to explain us a little bit more detail. Yeah, thank you. Also first of all, this is not um, the rigid base plate assumption or the rigid base plate uh, boundary condition is not an Hilti invention. That's important. This is a basic philosophy of the Eurocode 2. That means at the end, if I want to apply or if I want to design anchors according to Eurocode 2, I have to provide a rigid base plate. And even if the rigid base plate definition is not really precise formulated, we have several influences, especially on the anchor loads, what happens if I calculate with a rigid base plate, but in reality I have a non-rigid base plate. This at the end ends up to higher loads, and the reason is what we can show now here on the slide on the left side. What you see, and also maybe we can see this in the, we have a look into the camera. If you pull at the column, and in case of a rigid base plate, of course you would have a stiff base plate, nothing would, work, um, nothing would happen. But in the non-rigid case, you have prime forces, you see how the edge of the base plate is bending down, to say it like this, leading to compression forces below the concrete, and of course uh, leading to prime forces and consequently increasing the anchor loads. So at the end, even under tension load, a non-rigid base plate lead, may lead to higher anchor loads compared to your original um, design assumption. Another example, what you see on the right on the slide is, again, if we for example have only tension on the column, in a, in a rigid base plate case you have an equal load distribution to all anchors if you have a central um, position tension load. That means all your anchors are taking up the same load. But at the end, if you have a non-rigid base plate, you have a less stiff system. This would mean here in such a case, for example, that the middle anchor would be loaded much higher compared to the other one, while this would not be taken into account in your original design. So again, even we, I showed you now two examples where tension even lead to higher anchor forces uh, may be completely different compared to the original assumption. Then on the left side, and this is also what we maybe can show with our new camera, <laughs> is what you see if you have now um, a system under bending. Normally we have an inner lever arm, uh, which is between the, where the lever arm is more or less a distance between the anchor. But if you see now uh, that you have the compression forces much nearer or much more in the center of the um, item to be fastened, you see that you reduce the inner lever arm. And if you have the same bending mo moment, but a reduced lever arm, of course you have higher single loads on the anchor. That's something which leads uh, to, to higher anchor loads. And on the right side, you have this example of compression, um, which you also see in the, in the, uh, in the camera. In, in our it's not a video, it's a live video to call it like this, where you see that even if we compress it, you have extreme high compression forces below the, um, below the base plate, which may lead, of course, uh, to cracking or uh, crushing of the concrete. So you see that, these, uh, that the non-rigid base plate does not have only influence um, the anchor forces, it can also have an influence on other um, parameters or conditions which have to be taken account into a Eurocode 2 design. 
And what are now all these parameters who are defining if I have a rigid or a non-rigid um, base plate? And they are super, a, a super, it's a basket of parameters which are influencing your rigidity of the um, anchor plate. It is of course a base plate size. That means also especially the distance from your anchor to the end of the anchor plate. It is, it is if you have stiffeners in your base plate, or of course the base plate thickness, the anchor size, the anchor type, chemical anchors, metal expansion anchors, injection systems, all anchors have a, um, a different um, stiffness and all this at the end um, has an influence how strong or how much your anchor forces are influenced. And this cannot be done by a hand calculation and this, cut, I tried it by the way, <laughs> and it cannot be done by a single calculation, there must be a solution. And as Mario is a very clever person, I think he brought up or he come up with a solution how to take this into account to comply with the Euro Code 2. So basically what we heard from you several times is firstly, okay, there is a rigid base plate assumption behind all design equations for anchors. But phew, what is a rigid base plate now? Is it 12 millimeters? Is it 16 millimeters? Is it 20? The answer is easy. It depends. It depends on your base plate. It depends on all the parameters Jörg was talking about. So that was the first question we, we heard a lot of times from our customers. The second thing we always heard about, okay, Hilti, you have a software designing our anchors. That's great. But I also need to design my base plate. I need to design my welds. I sometimes have stiffeners I need to design. Please think about it and try to come up with a solution to also help us here. So it's much more than I expected. We are not only talking about rigid base plate, we are talking about much more. Yes. So in the end, what with our solution we are going to present now in Provis Engineering, we offer a full software or one software that is doing the full design for you. First, it helps you to go through or to, to check if the base plate can be considered rigid or not. Secondly, it does uh, the check for the profile, it does the check for the anchor, welds, stiffeners and the concrete underneath the base plate. And after doing all these checks with a component-based finite element method, you will basically then see the design report with all details. I just got a sign from the colleagues over there in the social corner, so there are already the first questions and uh, let's, let's do some questions. Yeah, the first question and that perfectly fits. Thank you for, for the question. During bending, even in the rigid base plate, there is higher forces on the ends. Won't that affect anchor loading on that? So if the higher force is at the end, then in the end, probably we can, can we go back to the, to the camera and explain it with the camera? So if we, have, if we have a bending with a rigid base plate, I will try to simulate it. Your compression, your center of compression will be very close to the edge of the base plate. Your resulting, in case of bending around this axis, your resulting tension force will be here at the anchor. So in the end, this is the inner lever arm that will be uh, used in order to come up with your anchor forces. If my base plate is now non-rigid, what we see is that the center of compression is moving from the edge of the plate closer to the profile, which means this will give a reduction in the le in a lever arm and this will lead to increased anchor forces. Yes, it's a valid point. So the rigid base plate assumption will give you lower anchor forces. The non-rigid base plate assumption due to the reduction of the lever arm will give you higher anchor forces. In the end, how does our solution work? You will define, in our Provis Engineering software, you will define your application. Your base plate shape, your profile, all geometries, how many anchors you want to have, your base plate thickness you want to go with, your concrete, and so on, all the parameters Jörg talked about, and then you can hit calculate. Then the software will first help you to understand how far off the theoretical rigid base plate assumptions you are. If you are very close to the uh, theoretical uh, rigid base plate assumption, everything is good and you can go ahead. If you are far off, then in the end it requires a lot of engineering judgment and you might be outside of the uh, anchor design guideline S 
all or some of the equations there are only explicitly valid for rigid base plates. That's the first step we do. After that, uh, on the uh, right hand side, we do all the design checks for anchors, for the base plate, for welds, for stiffeners and for the concrete for you. And all this information, as I mentioned before, is then put into one comprehensive design report, which makes sure that you can present this either to building authorities or to a verification engineer if involved, or can, you can just use basically to document your work. So based on what you told us, what are the challenges you face? We have come up in quite some time of research and development in our organization. We can come, or we have come up with this solution, which is now uh, very soon available in Profis Engineering. Probably we can now hand over to Oliver for the second uh, part. Yeah, thank you very much. Now the question is, what are we offering with Profis Engineering? And before we really jump into the software, let me quickly guide you through about the flexibility that we are um, providing you so that you can really choose the right solution you need. First of all, you would say, okay, anchor design is sufficient for me. Then you can continue with the anchor design. You assume a rigid base plate. There are some construction boundaries you should consider. And then you're on the safe side. You can use the full efficiency. And, um, and you save time when using Profis Engineering. Or you could say, no, but I need to calculate all the profile, the weldings, stiffeners, the anchors, and, and also check the concrete. Then you could use um, the advanced um, base plate module. And then we would distinguish um, you the following solutions. First of all, you could say, okay, I need to fully apply to Eurocode. Then with the transparency we give you in Profis Engineering, you can see that you're approaxing, uh, approaching um, as, um, as close as possible to a rigid base plate. Um, you can see that by the anchor forces, how they deviate from um, rigid to realistic base plate. We will see that in a minute. Or you could say, I can deviate a little bit, that is fine for me. Um, I do kind of an engineering judgment. Also here we can support you. And here, for example, up to 10% deviation could be still okay. But um, also this uh, number we will refer later to. And the last thing, what can also be that you have a given a given um, geometry, a given thickness of a base plate, and you need to calculate the anchors, then you can do that with the software, and then at least you get realistic anchors, realistic anchor forces, and you can calculate the anchor forces according to the realistic distribution of the um, arriving loads to the anchors. Okay, now we have heard a lot on theory. Now, Mario, could you please show us the software? Yes. But sorry. I will hand over with one more question. We get the question, what is the stiffness of the base plate support in the FEM analysis? Is it infinitely rigid or is it flexible? Also, what we are using is a component-based finite element method. So the concrete is modeled as a component, the base plate is modeled as a component, the wells, the anchors, and so on. And each component has its own material or load displacement behavior. So in the end, I assume your question was uh, to the base plate. In the end, the base plate is not assumed as a rigid base plate. The base plate really has a realistic load displacement curve. And with this component-based finite element method, we, we, will, we are able to really show where the load is going to under realistic behaviors. If one component is stiffer, then the load will go there. If one component is less stiff, the load will go there. So all these kind of stiffnesses and all these kind of things are taken into account in a proper way. So we do not decide up front, this is now, uh, the base plate is stiff or this base plate is plastifying or this, ba uh, this base plate is non-stiff. We have really a material behavior, a stress-strain relationship from several more components, all the anchors, yes. welding seams, yes. profile, and based on this, at the end, the, the stiffness of the, uh, of the, or the, the rigidity of the base plate is assessed. Yes, 
And so let's look in our software process into uh, engineering. So what we have is we have the option in the 3D interface you can define uh, most of the geometrical parameters and also the loading. I have already done this for this example. And then I can now select what kind of welds I want to have. And if I want to have stiffeners, I can also select that over here. So let's just assume I have no stiffeners for this case. I have a loading, I have my anchor. And now for this application, I can now run the results. What happens now in the background, every component based on your input is now assessed, gets now a certain material behavior, and the component-based finite element solution is solving this problem now. So in the end, uh, we have now already a result. So timing-wise, we are looking at five to, sec five to 10 seconds for a calculation. Uh, as you know, if you have uh, a finer finite element mesh, it will, it will take some more time. If you have a larger finite element mesh, then it will uh, basically take less time. But on average, five to 10 seconds for this nonlinear calculation should, should give you the results. Let's look at the results. And what I said, or what we explained before, is that on the left-hand side, we see now the results for the theoretical rigid base plate assumption. Here in this case, you get 13.1 kilonewton on anchor number one, for example. If we look now at the right-hand side, which is now the realistic behavior, we see actually two patterns we discussed earlier together with Jörg. First, in the corner over there, you see some prying forces leading to a slight increase of anchor forces. And then what we also see is that the center of compression moved away what I discussed earlier on the model for the rigid uh, base plate, the compression starts at the edge of the base plate. If the base plate is not rigid, it will move closer and closer to the profile. And with this reduction of the lever arm plus these prying forces, in this case, we get now 14% higher anchor forces. What is now, how can we define if a base plate is still okay or not? So there is no guideline available to really tell you what a rigid base plate means in reality. So we have done quite some efforts on the research and development side, and we have compared tests. And in tests for deviations of the anchor forces, up to 10 to 12, 10, 11, 12%, we didn't see any difference in the failure loading. So in the end, what we can say, if you're staying within this boundary conditions, then in the end, your base plate is actually not really rigid, which is a theoretical thing, but it's very close. And from an engineering po judgment point of view, this is very close and you can hopefully take this uh, call and say, okay, yes, that's fine. If you are far beyond, then that's a problem. The software could still calculate it, but the thing is we wanna make sure is that you are aware you might be outside of the anchor design guideline as the equations or some equations over there are only valid for a rigid base plate. So, so what we saw at the end is all that if the loads of the single anchor within the group is deviating with around 10%, this has no effect on the ultimate performance of the group. And that's exactly uh, what, is, what is important. And this is what is, what is part of what, what Mario said. But I think there are, again, some questions. The question is, is the software used definitely elementary for anchors and base material same as base plate? So uh, in the end, no. The anchors are basically represented as springs with a certain nonlinear behavior. And the concrete is also, uh, also kind of modeled as a bed of springs, which is not really cut into finite elements. But the steel, the wells, the profile, the stiffeners, these are finite element solutions where the, the whole connection or the base plate is cut into finite elements and then basically solved in this way. The anchors, is, it's a spring with nonlinear uh, stress strain distribution and also the concrete is a certain nonlinear stress strain distribution for the spring. The next question, which brings you back to demonstrate the software, can you explain the weld curves? So in the end, what you see here 
in the results, if you click on a certain weld, you will basically see the, the different uh, stresses along the weld. If we look now at this weld, I think you can understand that uh, if I pull on this profile, the, the edge of the profile is much closer to the, uh, to the anchor. And if I would basically go back to my university time, our professor always told us stress is lazy. So in the end, the force and the stress doesn't want to go uh, a, a long way. So the stress always tries to go the shortest way. That's why for this weld, we have the maximum stresses or the peak stresses close to the profile. If we would load this now further, uh, then in the end, at a certain point of time, the first peaks would uh, plastify and then the load is basically distributed closer to the center of the flange. That's kind of the logic behind and I hope this is clear. Yes, it fits perfectly into, your, into that discussion now. What do I also see on the right side from verifications? I, I verify some more things, I would say. On the right hand side, all the parameters we talked about, anchor design, profile, plate and welds. For all of these things, we are doing the design verifications according to Eurocode. So on the right hand side, for all these things, you always have the summary of the results. And here you can even show uh, stresses. These are von Mises stresses. You can look at plastic strain. You can look at stress in concrete and you can look at the deformation. So on the right hand side, you always get all the results as a summary. And if you then want to know more details, you can go here and just create the comprehensive report we will probably look at after your next question. Um, if the deviation is more than 10%, for example, 20%, but the anchors failure modes are below 100% utilization, is the overall connection okay? Do you want to take this? <laughs> That's a nice question. There is no simple yes and no. Uh, because at the end, we have to separate between actions and resistance. That's always that game within the topic. That means at the end, we are calculating here a, a non-linear low distribution on the anchor. This is one part of the story. The other part is that you have a resistance calculation, a resistance design. And this resistance design is in general only possible to implement or to use if you have a rigid connection. So at the end, what we are doing is that we said, as before, we evaluated a lot of tests and we, we saw that we can still use more or less the resistance design according to Eurocode 2, even if the deviation of the anchor loads is approximately 10 to 15%. This is everything is fine. Now, if you are keeping these 10 to 15% and of course your utilization is below 100%, you are anyhow, in a, I would say, in a conservative area. If you have now 20, 25, 30 or 40 percent, normally we have to say that the resistance design, the CC method according to Eurocode 2 cannot be applied or only based on an engineering judgment. Yeah. For example, if you ask me, without now going too much into detail, but if I have a utilization of maybe 20 percent and I know um, that my um, I, so I have 20% and my deviation is maybe also 20%. Then, of course, I have to think about it. But at the end, there is a super um, publication where exactly this topic is discussed, as yes. far as I know. So, so to make it short, actually, no, because yeah. the resistance formulas for getting your design resistance published in ETAG or in Eurocode 24 now, they are explicitly only valid in case of rigid base plates. So if you're really far away, actually it's up to engineering judgment, but you're outside of the guideline. So actually, if you know more and if you're fine with it, okay, but in the end, you need to know you're outside of the guideline. Yeah. Perfect, additional feedback to this question. Greetings from London and thank you for the answer. Okay, <laughs> good. So another question, as the software is using the component-based component FEM, the stresses will greatly depend on the profile shape. Mm -hmm. What will be the result if we use the no profile case? <laughs> it's, it's very easy. If you have no profile, in the end your load cannot be transmitted to your uh, base plate. So in this case, 
the software won't let you run the calculation because you need to apply your force to a profile and then the profile will give via the weld scheme the, the force to the anchor plate but if there is no profile you cannot basically transfer these forces so in the end there will be no solution or the software will not uh, give you any solution for that. But I understand probably the question maybe I do not know up to now what kind of profile I will use which has an effect of course of the rigidity mm -hmm. but of course then I would I would choose at the end a profile which I would either would I would what I would assume which will be realized in such a way or of course if I use a, a lower profile I have a maybe the I have more, or I can generate higher stresses that would mean I would be on the conservative yes. side. Yes. And we have one last open question before <coughs> you then show us the report. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hi, I think that welds must not yield under the um, ultimate stresses. Welds should be considered in elastic state and the yielding is not allowed by codes, in my view. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting point. Uh, we have we have another opinion, but uh, we can we can discuss even further. I'm looking forward to that. So what we have is uh, we allow the the wells to yield up to a plastic strain of five percent. If you as a customer don't want to allow the the weld to yield, that's fine. You can set this parameter in the software, and your weld won't yield. The thing is just in this finite element approach on. Uh, Wells, if I go back to my example, you will, okay, so here it is, you will always see pretty high peaks over there. If you do your weld distribution or force distribution for an I shaped beam, then in the end you will just consider it along the flange and along the compressed flange, right? And so you will have the same, the same uh, level of stress along the whole weld. In this more sophisticated method, you have, you have these peaks and therefore we, together also with the experts that were and professors that, were, that are standing behind this method, we believe that's the right way to go. I would uh, be looking forward to some further questions uh, from your end to make sure that we can really uh, answer this question for you. But Mario, where do these 5% are coming from? Are these this, also Eurocode? These 5% these are also coming from Eurocode. So it's a limitation coming from the Eurocode? It's code. a limitation coming from okay. the Eurocode, yes. There is the Eurocode that defines all these finite element things. I think it's Eurocode 315. And basically there this limitation of 5% uh, plastic strain is coming from. But again, mm -hmm. every customer, you can decide you only want to allow 0% plastic strain, 2% plastic strain, 1% plastic strain, up to you how you want to customize this. Maybe just from the practical point, again, sorry, that means if I do not want to allow any kind of yielding, I could also um, assume this and make consider this by geometric yes. condition and I can then may, maybe do a calculation without a welding. Yes. Would you, that be a possibility? Yes, you can, you can select butt welds and for butt welds there is no check of the weld as it's assumed it's really welded through and in the end what we have there is you can also force the software just to stay in the elastic range and okay. not go further. Perfect. Let me let me just quickly show you the report. Uh, at the beginning there is the anchor design, also here we have the input parameters and then we have all design equations that are being used and for all of these design equations we also have the intermediate results in case you want to do hand calculations or somebody or you have an intern or a new colleague everybody should be uh, very, it should be very easy to, to understand and go through this and also for the base plate part, let me scroll now some pages further also here, we are giving always the uh, design references to the codes. We are always giving the formulas and we are also in the end giving the intermediate results. So here the von Mises stress checks, here plastic strain, and here is an example hole bearing. Hole bearing is done according to Eurocode 318, section 361, whatever. These are the formulas, these are the intermediate results, and then finally, okay, in my case, hole bearing is basically not an issue. Same for the wells. All this stuff is being defined in order to make sure that this is not a black box and you can really follow the steps in order to feel good about it. So full transparency. Oh, I can yes. really check every, every, every limitation where it's coming from. Um, yes. Also the modules behind. Yes. 
And also, again, as you have said, uh, there is a publication in a structural journal where we uh, present this method uh, for you in order if you want to have some more details and so on. In the follow-up email to this webinar, we will send you this information for you to have a look. Cool. Michi, are there okay. some more questions? Uh, now we we'll go ahead with the next one. The whole dimension will be given by the software according to the loads or we have entered the sizes and the software says if it's safe or not. Mm -hmm. So you have to enter uh, the sizes. So in the end, if you want to have a circular base plate, if you want to have a rectangular base plate, if you want to, for example, have a different profile, if you want to move your profile around on the plate, you can do all of this. But in the end, the software works in a way you define your problem, software, you define your loads, the software is calculating, is calculating the results for you, and then you need to check if you're happy with it. Otherwise, you need to change one or two parameters and iterate once more until you get to the result. So just showing you what I said before, let's just now use a, a software, that, a, a smaller profile that has a certain eccentricity over here. And then also for this, we can just calculate it and the software will basically tell you, first of all, is my base plate still under this consideration close to rigid or not? And then doing all the design checks for all the five things uh, we mentioned before. I think we also offer a training for that software as far as I know and exactly in this training we also show what can be done to fulfill the Eurocode requirements yes. or on what, what kind of parameters I can play to increase the, the rigidity of the base plate. Yes, for example, let's just uh, assume if you have anchors that are really far away from the edge of the base plate, if you assume these prying forces, this is the worst thing you can do. And there are a lot of tips and tricks uh, our Hilti colleagues will be happy to share with you going forward in order to make sure that you can, in a very fast way, iterate and get your solution working. Um, does the software take into account the allocation of anchors under the load in the design process? That's the perfect question for you. Yes, also yes, we t <laughs> so the, at the end, the stiffness, the elongation, of course, also, because at the end, this is the result of the stiffness. But ye yes, we take into account um, the stiffness of every anchor system. We even take into account, even if it sounds stupid, what kind of material it is. And we even take into account how much pre-tensioning do you um, apply from talking. Yeah? That means at the end, we have a complete stress uh, stress strain relationship of the anchor type. And this is quite interesting because it can be that this may have a positive effect of your design. So, uh, taking up Jörg's point, if you have a very stiff anchor with almost no displacement, your prying forces will be much higher. If you have an anchor that allows 0.2 millimeters of displacement at a certain load, in the end, your prying forces will be lower. So we did a lot of tests. We did thousands of tests in order for our product to come up with a nonlinear uh, behavior of our anchor, which is basically represented in the software. Yeah. And also here we show in the training or uh, what kind of anchor type is maybe is maybe l or is softer compared to another one. Yes. Okay, then the next one for you. Any update notification regarding seismic calculation for new version? Uh, I have some troubles to understand this question, but uh, let me talk about seismic. <laughs> so our software also allows anchor design under seismic loads. This module, uh, which helps you to design also the base plate, the wells, the stiffeners, the profile and so on, is not yet uh, designed in order to also cater to seismic loads. So in case you have seismic loads, the software here can help you to find out what it's needed that your base plate is kind of considered rigid. And then you would need to switch off the extended functionality and go to the anchor design and then with some engineering judgments do your anchor design. But so anchor design, yes, we have under seismic considerations, base plate, wells, stiffener design for the time being, no. If this is an issue or if you need to have this, please in the survey at the end of the webinar, let us know more about it, that we really know what you need and that we can make sure that we have a look into it. Does the software give any recommendation about the plate thickness? Like, is it telling us if the plate 
sick is sufficient or no? So it gives you two things. First, it tells you, yes, this, your application, how you entered it, including your base plate thickness, does it work? Yes or no. If it works, then good to go. If it doesn't work, the software won't tell you how much you need to increase your base plate thickness because you could do also other things than increasing base plate thickness. You could add stiffeners, for example. You could change your anchor system. You could change geometry. You could change whatever, probably 50 parameters. And that's why it's hard for us to just tell you a higher uh, base plate thickness. We, you enter your application and the software will tell you, yes, does it work or no, it doesn't work. In case of no, you will need to decide which parameter you want to change and then you will need to iterate once more in a manual way. Mm. So no automatic optimization, but this is also not possible because you can play with different parameters and we of course do not know what kind of parameters do you want to I increase. Normally, yes, in a nutshell, increasing the, the plate thickness is normally the first thing which is done, but at the end you are losing of course material. Yes. Also you are wasting material for something which you can maybe achieve with, with a uh, different anchor or which you can achieve with stiffness. Can other materials be defined for the base plate besides steel? Like aluminium. <laughs> besides steel. <laughs> like. uh, for the time being, no. For the time being, uh, our solution is limited to the materials defined in Eurocode 3, which is S2, 35, 275, 355 and 450. For the time being, no. Please, in the... Uh, in the survey at the end of the webinar, please let us know what kind of material you would need for which kind of application for us to make sure that we can have a look into it and that we can decide uh, when or if we can bring this in the future. We are committed to developing this solution further, but therefore we need your input and we need to know what, what are your needs in order for us to take smart decisions in order where we invest our money uh, into going further. Could you please explain again the 10% rule of sum between rigid and flexible me uh, method? Sorry, I missed it before, so I sure. hope you can repeat it. Yeah. Also at the end, sure, <laughs> that's a key part. What we did is, also first of all, we checked a lot of tests, also real tests, experimental tests. It is also very important to note these were not Hilti tests. Yeah, these were tests coming from different universities, from different sources where the loads on the individual anchors was measured based on different uh, base plate thicknesses and at the end afterwards the complete group was loaded up to failure and it was checked how the failure load of the complete anchor group, group is reduced by the for example base plate stiffness. And at the end what we saw is and we evaluated all these tests if the individual anchors of a group are deviating with around 10% of the low 10 to 15% compa compared to what would be expected in case of rigid base plate, the load carrying behavior of the complete group was not influenced. So at the end, the, the deviation of 10, 10 to 15% of the individual anchors of the groups have no effect on the ultimate resistance. This is what we saw in these tests, and also these tests were not just pure tension tests, these were uniaxial and two biaxial bending tests. So with super, sometimes with super uh, small base plate thicknesses and sometimes with super thick base plate thicknesses. So we saw a lot of this and this was the rule what we said that even if you have here a 10% deviation, we do not see any influence in a negative manner on the anchor group resistance. Hopefully this uh, is bringing some more light into, <laughs> uh, into your questions. Otherwise we will distribute also our publication yes. Uh, probably in two to three weeks after the webinar to all attendees and there we have also in this publication also the method what we did and so on plus the results and some diagrams is also hopefully uh, explained in a, in a way uh, to be easy to understand. And so also with references so exactly. you know what kind of tests were taken into account. Exactly. No, the next uh, question is will there be an update to allow shelf angels as a profile? A shelf, so le ledger angles and things like that. I, I assume that's your question. For the time being, uh, this is not there. Uh, you, there is a way how you can simulate this. 
uh, in the end you can go there and just uh, define that you don't have an I-shaped beam, so to your base plate you just add a kind of flat bar and then you apply your load there. The only limitation is you need to apply your shear load and so on on the surface of the base plate. So it's not uh, there in a proper way. For the time being there is a workaround how you can still use the software in order to calculate, calculate this application with uh, some minor simplifications. In the future, again, if this is a topic for you, please let us know in the survey because uh, yeah, if we don't need about the topics, then we cannot implement them. Okay, then we take the very last one. Um, could you please quickly show how we can enable weld options as currently I can't see that welding option. Okay. So, so that would be the last one and then we, we close it and all the open questions that are still um, here in our panel, we will answer afterwards. So let me zoom in a little bit because, so you have uh, for the web and for the flange, you have five different welding options. You can say, okay, for the web, for example, and now you can see it, there is no weld at all between the uh, web and the plate. You can say, okay, I want to have only a, a fillet weld, but only on one hand side. I can say, okay, I want to have the fillet weld on the other hand side and I want to have fillet weld on both ends or I want to have a butt weld. These are the five options you have for the weld. In case of I-shaped beams, you can use different weld types between web and flange. In case of other, like kind of closed profiles, like uh, whatever square hollow profiles or pipes, you can only logistically uh, or uh, from a log logical perspective, you can only select one weld that is basically then all around. I hope this uh, answer was sufficient. Yeah, then thank you very much for this um, huge interaction we had with you. And don't worry, all the questions will be after, uh, answered afterwards. Perfect. Thank you very much, Oliver, for welcome. your time. So it's a, a big thank you to our guest speakers and a big thank you to you. Don't forget the survey. Thank you very much and we wish you a great week and hopefully see you back in the next webinar. Bye. Bye. Bye.